Hello and welcome. My name is Andra Bell and I am a contributing educational consultant to Patton's Literacy Initiative. Today we will be talking about advanced phonemic awareness and its importance in the development of word reading skills. The mission of Patton is to support the efforts and initiatives of the Bureau of Special Education and to build the capacity of local educational agencies to serve students who receive special education services. Our goal for each child is to ensure IEP teams begin with the general education setting with the use of supplementary aids and services before considering a more restrictive environment. I hope you will leave this session with a clear sense of the terms phonological awareness, phonemic awareness and phonics, as well as an understanding of the three levels of phonological awareness. Specifically, advanced phonemic awareness and how it impacts word level reading. We will practice some advanced phonemic awareness skills today, and I will also provide you with some resources so you can implement these activities in your classroom. Additionally, classroom videos will be shared to show you what it looks like and sounds like with actual students. Here is a continuum of phonological awareness skills. Phonological awareness is the umbrella term for a broad set of skills that includes identifying and manipulating units of oral language, such as words, syllables, onsets and rhymes, and phonemes. The continuum goes from the largest chunks of oral language to the smallest. The smallest unit of language is individual sounds or phonemes. We'll talk more about this continuum and clarify the term phonemic awareness. A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound. So phoneme or phonemic awareness is the ability to hear and manipulate those individual sounds. Phonological awareness is the awareness of sounds only. It is void of print. No letters are introduced. No sound to symbol correspondence is taught. Phonemic awareness is a skill under the umbrella term phonological awareness. Phonemic awareness is when we drill down to single sounds in words. For example, cat has three sounds, k, a, t. Step has four sounds, s, t, e, p. Shop has three sounds, sh, a, Phonics involves the eyes and ears. Phonological awareness involves just the ears. Phonemic awareness skills require manipulation of the smallest units of sounds. You can have phonemic awareness without phonics, but you cannot have phonics without phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness skills are prerequisite skills for phonics. You may hear people say you can do these activities in the dark or with your eyes closed, but a caution here, it's best to see how the mouth moves and is shaped when making sounds. Not for letters to be seen, but to see the placement of the lips, teeth, and tongue to distinguish between sounds that are similar. Again, phonological awareness is the umbrella term that includes many skills. Phonemic awareness is included under this term. When we work with manipulating single speech sounds and words, when we work at the phoneme level, we call this phonemic awareness. Phoneme segmenting and blending is where we know students are ready for basic phonic skills. Our basic phoneme awareness skills prepare us for basic phonic skills. When students can segment and blend at least three sounds, they are ready for basic phonics. Phoneme deletion and manipulation is where we know these advanced phonemic awareness skills prepare students for advanced phonic skills, the gold star. We don't want to stop instruction at blending and segmenting. We want to make sure to teach and practice advanced phoneme awareness skills with students. When students are able to delete and manipulate sounds, they are ready for advanced phonic skills. We'll talk about the research that supports this, as well as the timeline for developing these skills. Word level reading is greatly impacted by a person's phonological acuity. If students have difficulty with phonological skills, they most likely will struggle with some or all aspects of developing word reading skills. 
There are three levels of phonological skills, early, basic, and advanced. Early phonological awareness skills will typically develop in preschool. Rhyme, alliteration, the ability to segment words into syllables, and identify the beginning sounds in words. Basic phonological awareness typically develops throughout kindergarten and first grade with the ability to blend and segment phonemes. Typically, these skills are mastered by most students by the end of first grade. Advanced phonological awareness involves manipulation of phonemes and continues to develop until about third or fourth grade. Next, we'll talk about how these skills are critical and support the development of phonic skills. Early phonological awareness skills are the key to developing early phonic skills, particularly letter sound knowledge. This knowledge predicts later reading development as strongly evidenced by decades of research support showing students require letter sound knowledge to phonically decode words. Please note that this knowledge, letter sound knowledge, then promotes development in basic phonemic awareness skills, which takes us to our next slide. Phoneme blending and segmenting facilitate development of basic phonics decoding and early spelling skills. Phonic decoding skills promote the growth of advanced phonemic awareness skills in typical readers. However, for our struggling readers, readers with a phonological core deficit, even if they are given intervention, development of advanced phonemic awareness, which is needed for efficient sight vocabulary, will not be automatic. It needs to be directly, explicitly taught. As stated previously, advanced phonemic awareness skills, deletion, substitution, and reversal, support the development of sight word vocabulary. These skills facilitate the ability to map many words, storing them in our long-term memory. In David Kilpatrick's book, Essentials of Assessing, Preventing, and Overcoming Reading Difficulties, he defines orthographic mapping as the mental process used to store words for immediate, effortless retrieval. It is the mechanism for sight word learning. It requires advanced phonemic awareness, letter sound knowledge, and phonological long-term memory. Let's try some phoneme deletion activities. I'll give you some directions. You try to delete the phonemes as asked. Listen and try first. Then I'll show you on the screen. Say spot. Delete the first sound. What word? Say paste. Now say paste without the t. What word? Say the word six. Now say six without the k. What word? Say the word trap. Delete the second sound. What word? Now let's see how you did. Here are the answers. Number one, the sounds were s, p, a, t. When you delete s, we get pot. Two, the sounds were p, a, s, t. When you delete the t, we get pace. Three, the sounds were s, i, k, s. When you delete the k, we get sis. Four, the sounds were t, r, a, p. When you delete the r, we get tap. Please note that deleting the first sound is the easiest, then the last sound, and then the medial sound is most difficult. Additionally, it is more difficult to delete a sound from a blend in the initial or final positions. This activity requires many skills. First, a person has to hold the word in their working memory, segment each phoneme, delete the requested sound, blend the new word back together, all in their working memory, and say the new word. I also want to point out that I'm showing you printed letters here in order for you to see how these activities are done. But when these activities are done with students, there shouldn't be any print shown to them at all.
I'd like to share some classroom videos to show how this might look in action. I've created a Padlet with all videos from this Quick Pick posted and collected in one place so you can watch them more than once. Please pause this Quick Pick, open an additional tab or window, and type in the tiny URL at the bottom of this screen, and then click on the videos under the title Phoneme Deletion. There are three samples to view. After watching, keep that Padlet window open so it will be easy to go back and forth from viewing this quick pick back to the Padlet as we'll be watching more videos. I'll see you back here in a few minutes and we'll move on to some more examples. Let's try some phoneme substitution activities. I'll give some directions. You try to substitute the phonemes as asked. Listen and try first. Then I'll show you on the screen one at a time. Say dry. Now say dry, but instead of d, say f. Say great. Now say great, but instead of t, say p. Say lesson. Now say lesson, but instead of e, say I. Say sling. Now say sling, but instead of ul, say w. Say lift. Now say lift, but instead of f, say s. As you work with students, notice that I'm saying sounds, not letters. You want to ask students to substitute sounds, not the letters, just as we've done here. Again, I'm showing you the words on the screen so we can review, but when doing these activities with students, you would not show any print. Here's our time to pause this quick pick again Go back to the tab or window you have open with the Padlet and watch the videos under the title Phoneme Substitution. If you accidentally close the tab, just type in the tiny URL again to find it. After watching the three phoneme substitution videos, come back to this quick pick and we'll continue learning more. Remember to keep your Padlet tab open so you can find it again easily. See you back here in a minute. A note of caution here, Dr. David Kilpatrick in his book, Essentials of Preventing and Overcoming Reading Difficulties, shares that phoneme reversal is not helpful with younger students, grades two through four, because of its difficulty level. However, it appears to be quite sensitive to reading problems for students in middle and high school. Also, remember phoneme reversal is not a reversal of spelling patterns. It is a reversal of the sounds you hear. Phoneme reversal is also an optional skill. It's great for challenging students who are ready. Let's try some phoneme reversal activities. I'll give directions. You try to reverse the phonemes as asked. Listen and try first, then I'll show you on the screen one at a time. Think sounds, not letters. Say keep. Now say keep backwards. Say ape. Now say ape backwards. Say niece. Now say niece backwards. Say cat. Now say cat backwards. Say zone. Now say zone backwards. Say park. Now say park backwards. This one is particularly tricky. The sounds are p, r, k. So the sounds reversed are k, r,
Remember, this skill would have to be done with older students, fifth grade and above. Here, we will pause again one last time for you to go back to the Padlet and watch the video under the title Phoneme Reversal. Please note in this video, these are fifth grade students who are able to blend and segment sounds. They are also able to add, delete, and substitute sounds. They are ready to try phoneme reversal, but since this is only their second time working on this advanced skill, I've provided some support in the form of moving chips for the sounds. After watching, come back to this quick pick and we'll complete our time together with ways to scaffold students and share additional resources. Many studies on word level reading and phonological awareness highlight that many students who struggle at a basic level of reading are missing an important link. Research is suggesting that this missing piece is advanced phonemic awareness. We cannot stop halfway up the staircase. We've got to keep climbing the stairs past segmenting and blending and teach, practice, advanced phonemic awareness. To further cement this point, David Kilpatrick in his Equip for Reading Success program explains that our phonological system is the basis for word memory and word recognition. He further notes that learning letter sounds and phonemic awareness skills are non-negotiable. They are essential to developing the ability to store words and gain a bank of sight words large enough to facilitate reading success. Efficient reading will not develop without these two critical skills. So you may be thinking, what if my kids are behind in phonemic awareness skills and aren't ready yet for these advanced ways of manipulating phonemes? How can I scaffold my students to build up these advanced skills? Let's look at the continuum again. We can prepare students for these advanced skills early by using larger chunks of language before working at the phoneme level. Compound words and multisyllabic words, as well as onset rhyme, are perfect for this. Let's look at some examples on the next slide. Let's try some examples with substitution and deletion at the syllable level. As we did before, listen and respond first, and then I'll show you in print. Here are some examples with compound words. This is an easier skill. I'll begin with the first syllable, then we'll try a couple with a second. Say nightgown, change gown to light, and the word is. Say daytime, change time to dream, and the word is. Say headlights, change lights, to ache, and the word is, say toothpick, change pick to brush, and the word is. We can also work with multisyllabic words. This is a bit more difficult. Say dimmer, change dim to drum, and the word is. Say monster, change mon to ham, and the new word is. Now let's do some deletion with these larger chunks. Listen again and try these activities. Then I'll show you in print for our work here. Remember, when doing these activities with students, they should not see print. Say nightlight. Say nightlight without light. Say daydream. Say daydream without dream. Say drummer. Say drummer without er. Say hamster. Say hamster without stir. Say toothbrush. Say toothbrush without tooth. Say headache. Say headache without head. We can also substitute with onset rhyme. 
The onset is the letter or letters before the vowel. The rhyme is the vowel and everything following it. For example, say sod, change s to n, and the word is nod. Say mug, change m to t, and the word is tug. With blends and digraphs, it would work like this. Say stain, change st to ch, and the word is chain. Say clay, change cl to v, and the word is they. Say thick, change th to ch, and the word is chick. Let's try some with substituting the rhyme now. Say rod, change odd to id, and the word is rid. Say clay, change a to app, and the word is clap. And just like with syllables, where we can delete the first or second syllable, we can also delete an onset rhyme, either the onset or the rhyme, and substitute sounds. Here are some helpful sites, all free, that can help you. The Oklahoma Phonological Awareness website actually has explicit lesson plans with materials that you can use in your classroom. It does not, however, provide activities or lessons in advanced phonemic awareness, but the earlier skills. It does get into phoneme blending and segmenting. The Florida Center for Reading Research provides many activities by grade level that work well in small groups and in independent stations or centers. The last site, Growing Book by Book, shares activities to help teachers and parents plan phonemic awareness activities that are fun. This too only goes up to segmenting and blending. Remember, we must move on to advanced phonemic awareness skills to prepare our students for advanced phonics skills and to build an effective sight word vocabulary. Here I've listed some assessments to help you ascertain where your students are on the continuum of development of phonological awareness. This will support you in planning for high quality, differentiated instruction for all of your students. For more information on literacy, please visit our patent webpage. By clicking on the Training tab, you can find the Professional Development Calendar for offerings provided at each of our three office sites. Here is the Padlet link once more for your convenience. Please save this link so you can go back and watch again if desired. I want to thank Central Dolphin School District and Delaware Valley School District for their generosity in allowing us to video and share their work. I've also included here a sample lesson on phoneme substitution. Please note these references as they were used to develop this information I shared with you today. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Please feel free to contact me with any questions.